President Zelensky is a serious welcome of the humanitarian operation by the International Red Cross as long as they are independent and neutral. Army units chase terrorist homes and Aleppo and file an infiltration attempt from Lebanon. Hezbollah Secretary General affirms that violence in Syria must stop and the political dialogue begin immediately. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our news for today. President Bashar al-Assad has received head of the Red Cross International Committee, Mr. Peter Morer, and the delegation accompanying him. Discussion covered cooperation relations between the committee and the Syrian government and the appropriate mechanisms to consolidate such cooperation. President al-Assad voiced Syria's welcome of the military operations carried out by the committee in Syria as long as it performs its work in an independent and neutral way. On his part, Morer expressed appreciation for the Syrian government's cooperation, praising mutual confidence between the two sides. <music> Army units have chased a terrorist group who tried to attack law enforcement troops near Halat, village in Telkalakh suburbs, killing two gunmen and capturing a third terrorist, Ahmed Suleiman Hassan. On the other hand, an army unit inflicted heavy losses on a terrorist group who tried to infiltrate from Lebanon into Syria at al Mishrafi village in Tel Kalakh. The armed forces caught direct hits on the terrorists and forced them to flee back into the Lebanese territories. The infiltration attempt coincided with fire shooting from Lebanese territories at the Syrian border guards in the site. Anti-terrorism squads raided today hideout of the armed terrorist group in the town of Halfan, Shimali, in eastern Hama. A source in the governorate was quoted by Sana correspondent as saying that the operation resulted in the killing of two terrorists, including Nasser Hassan Mohamed, arresting their weapons. The source added that engineering units diffused today an explosive device weighing 25 kilograms planted by an armed terrorist group under a bridge in al Ghab region. In cooperation with local inhabitants, army units continued to chase terrorists in Aleppo. They have succeeded to liberate 14 kidnapped persons, including women and children, in Oran region. They also killed a number of terrorists. Scores of terrorists were also killed, and vehicles provided with Doshka machine guns were destroyed in special operations carried out by army units near the schools of al Inzarad in Hanano, Muhammad Saleh Sabbagh in Bistan al-Basha, al-Mahadi in al-Mahadi neighborhood, and al-Taqaddum al-Arabi in al-Marjay quarter in Aleppo. Meanwhile, the army forces continued to clean Saif al-Dawla neighborhood from terrorists. They have found documents and charts that included the names of terrorist groups and their distribution. They also found various weapons and communication equipment in an apartment used by terrorists in Saif al-Dawla neighborhood. Authorities today found a terrorist group hide out in Al-Bahar neighborhood in Dara, which contained various weapons and a field hospital. The weapons included automatic rifles, Kalashnikov machine guns, military uniforms, bulletproof shields, binoculars, and helmets, in addition to surgical beds, each worth 1,200,000 Syrian pounds, as well as surgical equipment and large quantities of foreign medicine. Meanwhile, the authorities today captured three other terrorists in the same neighborhood and confiscated their weapons. Border guards today intercepted an armed terrorist group in Al Balata village in Al Haffa province, killing and wounding a large number of them as others fled away. The group had tried to attack the military unit. An official source on the region said weapons and ammunition hidden by the gunmen were confiscated.
Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov held a meeting with the delegation representing the Syrian internal opposition. Discussion during the meeting focused on ways of launching a political dialogue among all Syrian political factions to reach a solution to the Syrian crisis. Member of the Peaceful Change Current, Abdel Hadi Shahada, said discussions with the Russian side were positive, pointing out that the Russian side has always been supportive of the Syrian people. China renewed its support of a political solution to the crisis in Syria. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Hong Li said in a news briefing today that China opposes any foreign military intervention in Syria because the only way to solve the crisis remains a political one. The Chinese statement came ahead of the visit by our Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to Beijing later today. Finally, Secretary General of Hezbollah Party, Said Hassan Nasrallah, underlined that the stance of national resistance in Lebanon towards events in Syria is different from what has happened in other countries, as it confronts the U.S.-backed Zionist project, supports resistance, and shows readiness for dialogue and reforms. An interview with the Mayadeen TV channel, Nasrallah called for a halt of violence in Syria. A start of dialogue in order to make a political settlement a light of positive role played by countries like Russia and Iran to protect Syria from chaos and destruction. Nasrallah stressed that Iran exerts genuine efforts with any regional and international effort to find a solution to the crisis in Syria. With this, we conclude our news bulletin for today. Thank you for listening. Up next, the latest business, Ad Market News with Vani, but you can always go to our site in englishsyrianline.sy. Good afternoon. The General Establishment for Sugar discussed with the Minister of Finance its investment plan for the year 2013 and agreed on allocating 211 million Syrian pounds on replacement and renovation projects for the sugar companies and yeast plants. Moreover, they have prepared the production plan for next year according to the sugar beet quantities specified by the Minister of Agriculture and according to its agricultural plan, which includes manufacturing more than 1 million tons of sugar beet. The Minister of Agriculture estimated the production of pistachio for this year to be 75,000 tons, while the land cultivated with pistachio is more than 60,000 hectares, planted by more than 10 million trees. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization studies have shown that serious production of pistachio is 7% of the global production. The Director of the Agricultural Production at the Ministry pointed out that there were many projects that facilitated the planting of the pistachio trees, such as providing the planting trees to the farmers with very good prices. U.S. crude futures edged up to one-week highs, supported by hopes that the central banks would act soon to revive the global economy. U.S. stock futures pointed to a higher opening on Wall Street, tracking gains in Europe yesterday when the U.S. market was closed for the Labor Day holiday. Gold edged higher to its highest level in more than five months after lackluster manufacturing data from around the globe found speculation of imminent easing measures from central banks. The euro rose versus the dollar to its highest level in two months 
An optimism that the European Central Bank will unveil a plan to tackle the region's debt crisis this week, although gains were capped by concerns that the plan may lack detail. And with this we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.